Welcome to the Dairy News and Views podcast, a production of the Iowa State University Extension and Outreach Dairy Team. Our podcast covers current educational, research, and industry tools available for your operation to manage healthy cows and calves while producing the highest quality dairy products. All right, thanks everyone for joining us today on Dairy News and Views from the ISU Dairy Team. I'm Gail Carpenter, I'm the State Dairy Extension Specialist, and I'm joined here by my Extension Dairy Team colleagues, Fred Hall, Northwest Iowa Dairy Field Specialist, and Jem Bentley, Northeast Iowa Dairy Field Specialist. Uh, Today we are also joined by Mariah Busta from the Iowa State Dairy Association. Mariah is the Executive Director, uh, as well as our special guest, uh, Iowa Secretary of Agriculture, Mike Nag. So we are, first of all, well, thank you everyone, before we hop in, thank you all for joining us today. Well, thanks for the invitation. Always great to visit with you guys. Yeah. All right, and we are joining this this powerhouse group together to talk about the Choose Iowa Dairy Innovation Grant uh, and the Choose Iowa program. Uh, so we these are due on sep- December second. So we want to make sure that everybody is aware of these uh, and and ha- and learns a little bit more about them. So uh, warm welcome to all of our guests and all of our returning hosts. And uh, I think I'll just go ahead and jump in. Our first question is what is the Choose Iowa program uh, and why was it started? You bet. I, I'm kind of chuckling because, you know, the uh, with the deadline coming up for the grant application, it's like I'm the closer, you know, I'm, I'm coming in and, and encouraging people at the last minute here before the December 2nd deadline. But uh, yeah, thanks again for the invitation and any chance I get to, to uh, talk about and brag about Choose Iowa is one that I'm going to take. And we're really proud of this, uh, the way this program is, is taken off. And, you know, I'll go back and, and say that it really, it did come out of the disrupted supply chain kind of time that we went through during COVID. And, you know, people really asking about where did the things that we rely on come from? And uh, of course, that then converged with a growing interest in buying local, wanting to know more about where your food comes from, know the farm. And uh, I say, those are those are, uh, we, we take a silver lining from something that we don't ever want to go through again and match it up with something that was a t- growing trend and one that has has continued to gain steam. And you've got yourself the recipe for uh, Iowa launching our new state branded program. And so uh, it's Choose Iowa. It's for, uh, to promote Iowa grown, Iowa raised and Iowa made products. And, you know, I, I've said from the beginning of my time as secretary that I would, uh, I was going to fight for markets wherever they are in the world. And so that means we'll go anywhere from, we were just in India in September and, and uh, a trade mission just got back from Taiwan and Japan. And those are important things. And we'll also do domestic market development, like, uh, you know, uh, biofuel access and those types of things. But we will also fight for markets at the very, very local level. And that's what really Choose Iowa is about, is connecting consumers with what they're looking for, uh, but also matching them up and providing more market opportunities for Iowa's farmers and businesses. And uh, to, we launched this um, at the Iowa State Fair, which, of course, can't think of a better place to launch a, a program like this than the Iowa State, the great Iowa State Fair back in 2023. Fast forward to today, we've got 136. I just checked that number today, 136 members, and it's growing literally uh, every week. We've got new members signing up. And uh, in fact, I, I, uh, this year has been kind of fun because I'm doing, I'm, I'm starting to do Christmas shopping. I know I'm late for, for that, but uh, I'm doing Christmas shopping. I'm going to chooseiowa.com and I'm typing in, you know, maple syrup or uh, any number of things. And uh, you can, you can do your Christmas shopping on Choose Iowa this year and find all these great farms and businesses that are making these products. Well, that's so, fa- if you're late, that's bad news because I am <laughs> much later than that. So I know where I'm going to be doing my Christmas shopping now. <laughs> I love it. Secretary Nag, highlight some of the positive outcomes that you've already seen from this program in our ag industry in Iowa. Yeah, I'm happy to. And, you know, look, we're we're uh, we're we're modeling our program. There there are other branded programs, other states, you know, um, uh, got to be NC is a North Carolina brand, you know, uh, a fresh from Florida, a go Texan, you know, these are some kind of famous brands that have been around for decades. Right. And so you, you can look at those. Those are very well-established programs and they are, because they're so well-established, they can give you, uh, you know, 
oodles of uh, economic return and ROI and, you know, sales information. And so we're, we're in the process of generating all that, but of course we're only a little over a year old. So we don't have that exact, I can't tell you our exact, uh, you know, what our exact ROI is, but we're starting to really gather some anecdotal stories of folks that uh, had an increase in sales or that they uh, had a, a chef that they were working with and the chef, you know, using the Choose Iowa directory has started to just go right down the list and s- secure, you know, butter and produce and meat and from, from the vendors. And so, you know, when people really get into it, uh, it's just creating more connections and more, uh, more awareness about these, these vendors, these farms. But it's specific to dairy. Uh, of the 136 members, I love these statistics. You know, we, we then ask, well, what kind of products do you, uh, are you selling? You know, 26 of those are offering cheese, Iowa, choose Iowa. You know, that means an Iowa sourced cheese, uh, 22 ice cream, 17 milk, 13 butter. Um, you know, this number is growing. The dairy is one of the strongest sectors, frankly, in the choose Iowa program. And uh, we think that there's already good stories to tell. Uh, but that there will be even more so. And I, I suspect too, and we're going to talk about the grant program, uh, but that these offering up some grant dollars to help, uh, especially Choose Iowa members, but really any dairy farm can participate. And, and they're using those dollars to invest in additional on-farm processing equipment, but also uh, we also offer dollars to help with labor saving equipment on the farm as well. So it's both a processing uh, you know, type of grant, but it's also something that's focused on pro- productivity and profitability as well. And I like that about this, the way this grant program is structured. It's it's really looking holistically at uh, a dairy farm and some of the challenges that they might encounter, but also the opportunities that they might have to, uh, to sell direct to consumers and uh, uh, gain a little more, uh, I don't know, control of their own destiny, if you will, on, on uh, marketing their own product. Well, maybe that's a good segue then. Can we talk about this Choose Iowa Dairy Innovation Grant that's due? Well, we're recording this on Monday, uh, November 25th, so it's due a week from today as we're recording. Can you uh, can you tell us more about it? You bet. You bet. So, uh, so yeah, we've got this grant. It's the second year of the grant program, and, uh, uh, you know, we're really, we worked with the Iowa State Dairy Association, Mariah's on here, and, and uh, you know, we've had a great partnership there and really, uh, it's, uh, and a lot of interest, bipartisan support in the legislature, and the House and the Senate to do something. They've been very supportive of Choose Iowa broadly and meat processors, but they're also really specifically supportive of dairy and the dairy processing that we see the opportunity for, but also this this, uh, investing in uh, labor-saving technology as well. So uh, the total grant funding available is $750,000. And, and, uh, you know, I always think, well, was there interest, right? Did we create something that there was no interest in? Well, I can answer that question. Uh, Last year of the seven, we had a $750,000 available, $2.6 million was requested. We had, we awarded 20 grants, there were 50 applications. So unfortunately we had limited resources and, and folks didn't get to participate, but I would flip that and say, but the ones that were funded are great projects and uh, something that of course bodes well for the future of the grant program. Because you say, if you're funding great program, great, great projects that have a very easily explained uh, return on investment, uh, then, then that's a good story to tell. And I think we, we owe it to the taxpayers to be able to say that. And we certainly can with these, these projects. So of the, the pool that was awarded, uh, you know, it was, uh, uh, let me see, five of those were related to on-farm processing and uh, the remainder were that on-farm equipment component. So that was the kind of the mix of uh, processing versus production. Yeah, no, I echo all of those comments. And I love to just the excitement that I heard from the dairy farmers this past Mm -hmm. year about the Choose Iowa program. And if they missed the grant period last year with it being brand new and they, you know, still weren't sure what they wanted to do, well, they're excited to apply this. I'm excited to see how many applications there are. I mean, 50 last year is fantastic. Very next point, they were really, really competitive, great projects that were funded. And so excited for the momentum to continue to build with this and so appreciative from Lecture for their support to this. You know, I, th- I would add too that, you know, we saw a range and, and we, we have by design, Choose Iowa is a, it's a big umbrella. We, we, uh, we want 
producers, processors, beverage, food products, you know, all of the horticulture, you know, we want this to be a big, big tent. We also want the, the, the uh, really for the grant program to affect and be, be something that's beneficial to all different sizes and scale of, of farms, you know, and, and these grants can go up to, a, there's a cap of uh, a cap of a hundred thousand dollars per grant. And we had a couple of those, I think three by quick look here that were actually capped out at a hundred thousand, but then we had a couple that were uh, six thousand dollars. So you know these can be, uh, you know maybe it's a pasteurizer, maybe it's some vats that you need, maybe it's robotics, maybe it's a uh, you know it, it's a variety. And I think that's the point that I want to stress too is uh, it doesn't need to be a hundred thousand dollar project to be granted. Uh, we would like to be able to fund projects of all sizes and for dairies of all sizes. Yeah, and especially with a lot of these labor reducing technologies, a lot of them, you know, they're they got a high upfront cost. Yeah. Um, but they can pay for themselves, right? And this is a great opportunity for some of those caps for some of those investments to be able to um, kind of kickstart some really great things on your farm when it comes to reducing labor, but also uh, improving cow health and improving animal welfare. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to walk us through some of the some of the logistics, some of the nuts and bolts of it? So who's eligible to apply? Uh, where can we find more application materials? Let's, what's the what's the logistics of application? You bet. Well, first of all, I, I want to just say we've got a tremendous team here at the Iowa Department of Ag and Land Stewardship that's running the Choose Iowa uh, program. Beth Romer uh, moved back to Iowa. She's running our program and she had been in North Carolina for several years, several years working on their got to be NC program. And, you know, Beth knows, I, I, I would say this about the, the different branded programs around the country. It's, it's a great network. And you, uh, we had lots of conversations about, uh, and people were willing to say things like, well, um, the one thing you must do, or here's the thing you should never do. You know, it's great to get advice like that, right? That's what you guys are in the business of doing, right? Is giving great advice. And uh, here, here's some guidance. And we were able to really benefit from a lot of other states. Uh, so in crafting our grant programs, in crafting our branded program, in making strategic investments with working with chefs and, and restaurants and those types of things, this is really all born out of a lot of experience that the team brings. So um, what I, that's a way, long way of saying we have a great team that can answer all your questions if you have any about this grant program. So the best way to, to really find the information is to go to chooseiowa.com. Again, you can do your Christmas shopping there, but you can also find <laughs> grant information as well. Um, and, you know, look, the, the big things are in terms of what's eligible, you know, uh, I mean, the, the equipment costs, uh, the, you know, are, are eligible. You know, it's things like you can't uh, you can't do marketing. You're right. We're not going to the grants can't be applied to things like that. But any any uh, uh, items, any equipment, you know, there's a list and, and actually a really nice list of uh, things that are eligible and ineligible. And then also the scoring criteria. We, of course, want people to be successful. And so we go ahead and post the, the scoring criteria. What's the, the uh, what are your goals? What are your ability to uh, affect that to achieve that? You know, we're trying to increase sales here. We're trying to increase the market. Um, what's your work plan and your timeline to get through? Of course, we want to fund projects that are ready to go. Um, and that can be accomplished in 12 months. And, and maybe that's one of those things I know we talked about is some folks might need a little more lead time to get that project done. Well, don't worry, we're going to fight uh, to make sure we've got this program available next year. So your project may not be ready yet. Uh, but the other piece is you can't have started yet. We, uh, we also won't, we also can't turn around and pay a grant, uh, award a grant on a project that's half done. And so that those are some of the big parameters are Make sure you haven't started yet, but also make sure the project is something that can be accomplished in the uh, in the next 12 months. Yeah, this is a great time of year to do it because maybe you were up at World Dairy Expo of beginning of October and you saw some vendors and you've had some ideas percolating. Um, this would be a great time to to take the leap on some of those things. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, you know, process pasteurization equipment, processing vats, uh, packaging. Uh, you know, packaging uh, and labor equipment, uh, you know, those types of things, uh, labor reducing equipment. So the milking robots, uh, health monitoring systems, feeding system, cleaning tools, you know, uh, things that we won't pay for, you know, uh, uh, labor, you know, labor costs is something that we, we won't paying off debt. That's something we can't uh, pay for real estate purchases, rent, 
uh, the, those types of things. I mean, so, it, but here's the good news about that. I, and you don't need to just take notes furiously as I'm talking about these things. Go to chooseiowa.com. This is something we believe in strongly, which is we want folks to be successful. We don't want to, we also don't, we know that people's time is precious. Yeah. And so, you know, if you're going to put the effort in, we want to show you how to be successful. And so that's why we go to such great lengths to put the information there. I think it's pretty cool to hear some of the, some of the stories from the producers that have already accepted the grant, um, which you'll hear here in a little bit on our podcast. If you yeah. hang on to our podcast here, we did uh, visit with a producer about his labor savings technology. And it's really kind of cool to hear them, you know, realize how much labor they are saving and the value that they put on that because they're family farms, right? And right. they can't put a, a dollar value on the time that it's saving, t- you know, to be able to spend time with their families and um, still be able to manage their dairy operation. So I think those stories are pretty, pretty unique to us. You know, I, that makes me think of a story. I can, I can remember where I was standing and who I was talking to. I won't share their name because I didn't ask permission to, but I can tell you that uh, they'd put a, they'd put a robot in and it was a, it was a 60 cow dairy. And uh, the gentleman got a little emotional saying, you know, the difference before versus after is I've gone to kids sporting events that I didn't for my younger kids that I didn't get to go to for my older kids. And that drove home to me. Wow. That was really heartfelt because this, you know, the work has to be done every single day and it takes so many hours every day. And if these types of things, if these types of investments can help with a little more quality of life and, a, and you know, do a little better job of managing things and a little better job. I mean, that just, that just makes all the difference in the world. So we're, we're really proud to be able to offer this, assistance to uh, to folks. I want to add too, I know that applying for a grant can be kind of daunting, but I really do want to commend the team at the Department of Agriculture for doing a great job application process that isn't scary. It's quick and easy for farmers to understand and apply for. And so that's some of the feedback that I've heard from producers that applied last year is that, you know, it really wasn't so bad. So really, really great job. And they are also so helpful to Beth and the team there are absolutely able to answer any of the questions you have when it comes to applying and whether your project is eligible or not. So really it's a, it's a pretty stress-free process. Yeah. And I would say this too, that, and again, knowing that, that time is, is precious and, and, you know, look, I want to say this, if you're, if you're trying to get an application pulled together and you're coming down to the deadline noon on December 2nd, call, call us it's important to observe the the deadlines because we have to run a a process that's fair. Uh, But what I would encourage you to do is if you're, you're waiting for a piece of information or you're trying to finish the last piece, call us and let us know and tell us what's going on and we can help you through that. Or, and, you know, because I want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to get in who can. And, you know, I don't want somebody missing by a minute. We're not, we're not this kind of place where, you know, you, you, you got that submitted at 1201 and sorry, you're out. But, but at the same time, we do have to run a fair process here. So uh, better, better to pick up the phone and call and ask and, and let us know what's going on. If you're having trouble, uh, then, then, to, you know, feel like you've missed the window. Uh, so one of the eligibility requirements is that businesses must be permitted by the Iowa Department of Agriculture and Land Stewardship or in the process of obtaining a permit. So does that apply just to dairy cattle producers or would that apply to permitted dairy goat producers as well? It would also include those permitted uh, dairy goat operations as well. All right. Very cool. So before we let you both go, Mariah and Secretary Nag. Any last comments about the Iowa dairy industry? We've spent a lot of time today bragging about how great the Iowa dairy industry is. Any any last thoughts uh, before we wrap up? I'm going to defer to Mariah first. You know, she she gets to she runs the show over there, so I'm going to let her brag first, and then I'll I'll finish up. Well, I guess I'm a big holiday person with the with Christmas coming up. I mean, it's just great, such a great time to reflect and appreciate dairy farmers because milk has such an important piece in Santa's diet. So uh, the average Iowa cow produces 128 28 glasses of milk a day. So we don't have to worry about Santa being short on milk to go with his cookies. So I want to state dairy association to all of Iowa's dairy farmers for doing such a great job. 365 
I think, wow, that was fantastic. I love <laughs> that setup. And oh, by the way, I should mention nine of our Choose Iowa members uh, sell eggnog as well. So I'm going to make right. sure I'm, I, I don't know if I can, maybe I'll get to all nine this year. I don't know. We'll see. I, it's, a, it's a goal. It's aspirational, right? Look, I, I look at back at this year and um, I think about some of the challenges, maybe the last two years, right? Dairy prices, very, very challenging, uh, significant headwinds. Of course, we've seen the price situation improve uh, somewhat uh, here as we came through 2024. But then just in time for that, we also were faced with a new uh, challenge and that being uh, H5N1 and the interplay between dairy and, and uh, poultry. And, you know, and that's been challenging and, and we've, we've had to learn some new things and we're not done working on that. So I would like to just say how much I appreciate the way our industry has been proactive, collaborative, recognizing that no one sector of this of our agriculture stands alone. We're all we work together. We must work together. I think that makes our state special and unique. We're not just a dairy state or just a swine state or just a beef state. We're we're all of those things and an egg producer and a turkey producer and a biofuels producer, right? We don't we don't have the luxury of being able to just focus on one or two things. We, uh, we must work on these types of issues, animal health issues included as a whole agriculture, all species type approach. And I, I appreciate that people have been very good about uh, working together. And there's a lot that we still don't know yet about how uh, all of this is going to play out and the types of challenges that we may yet face this year or into 2025. 20, uh, and so I think it's on that backdrop that then you can talk about things like this, which are positive, that are, they're, they're, they're fun. They're giving consumers things that they're looking for. They're addressing real needs on farms. And, uh, and yet something that I think is we're building here, that's something we can be really proud of. So I am anxious to see this, uh, this, this round of grants come in because I'm always blown away by the creativity uh, that we that we see out there across the state and uh, anxious to get these awarded and get these projects going. So I just want to thank, uh, and, and of course, as we're heading into Thanksgiving here this week too, uh, it is a time, and I've been encouraging Iowans every chance I get here the last few days is when you're sitting down to the table and you look at that amazing meal on the, on the table, the bounty that's there, remember where it came from. Would you just for a second or two, a minute or two, remember we're so blessed to live in the greatest state and the greatest country in the world. And our agriculture is a key component to that. Well, that's a perfect note, I think, to wrap us up. So uh, again, thank you so much, Mariah. Thank you so much, Secretary Nag, for joining us today. Great discussion. Uh, everybody, don't turn off your podcast yet. We have another interview coming up with a dairy producer who was a successful recipient of last year's Choose Iowa Dairy Innovation Grant. So don't... Uh, don't turn your channel yet or, or switch your podcast yet. Stay tuned. Uh, and again, thank you everybody for, for joining us for this discussion. Today we have on our podcast, Ted Wolf. He was a recipient of the Choose Iowa Dairy Innovation Program the last round. And we wanted him to give us an idea of the application process and kind of tell us a little bit about his technologies that he's implement, implemented on their farm using the funds. So thanks for being on the podcast here, Ted. And why don't you tell a little bit about your operation here for the audience? Yeah, it's good to be here. Um, we currently farm, me and my brother own 100 or 230 uh Primarily Holsteins with some few Ayrshire cows. Um, it's primarily family help, uh, me and my brother, along with our families. Um, we have another brother that milks part-time in the morning. Um, and we have uh, a couple uncles that help out when we're chopping and busy times like that. Uh, we milk in a parlor, free stalls, raise corn, alfalfa, and that's about it. Yeah, in northeast Iowa uh, by Bankston. It's kind of uh, about 20 miles west of Dubuque. So. so, Ted, what prompted you to apply for the Choose Iowa Dairy Innovation Grant last year? Well, uh, we kind of felt like we were maybe missing some heats on some cows. Um, so we uh, not – I always considered – I thought we always spent a lot of time with our cows compared to some other people with – a lot of off-farm help but it's it seemed like we we're getting a few cows that 
kind of like hard to show heats, um, stuff like that. So we were kind of looking into activity monitoring systems and we checked into one in particular at World Dairy Expo. And then as some time went by, he contacted us and stuff. And he he's actually the one that informed me and said, hey, just so you know, there is a grant available in Iowa um, for labor-saving technology. And I guess that's how we found out about it. So then we checked into it and stuff and uh, started talking to other farmers and some more people knew about it, I guess. And um, so, yeah, we ended up getting a BOLA system and it was something we were looking into and the grant made it even better that kind of put you in gear to, hey, let's really check into this. And uh, yeah, I think it's a great program. Yeah, that's something I saw a fair amount of last year uh, is companies getting excited about it and using it as kind of a way to leverage some of their products, um, labor reducing technology products mostly. Uh, and uh, yeah, I you know talked to a couple other people this year that are um, excited about it again. So um, it's a great opportunity for companies uh, that want to be able to make these labor reducing technologies uh, accessible for people because I think we all know that um, there's a high upfront cost for a lot of these, right? So if you can get part of that upfront cost covered. Um, through programs like this, it makes a great opportunity to be able to use some of these things on your farm. Oh, absolutely. Ted, Ted walk us through, you know, what the uh, technology is, the brand, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we ended up uh, choosing uh, FarmFit Bolus from Sexing Technologies. Um, it's a bolus um it's comparable to a size of a cow magnet a little bit longer i would say but comparable diameter they can go into animals that are um down to like two months old so um we decided to go with a bolus system compared to uh wearable ear tags or collars because as we all know we don't like doing things over and over and over so when you put this bolus in you're done this animal has this bolus in for life there's no more switching of ear tags there's no more looking for ear tags and bale feeders there's um, and it's accurate um, it gives you a real real time um, temperature of a animal not just if they're not just that they're got a fever or cold like it is we get a sick cow, it's, you look at her chart and it tells you if she's 101 or if she's 105. It doesn't tell you if she's high fever or low temperature. Um, and then there's readers. So we put these boluses in and then there's readers throughout the farm. Um, I think they're like, oh, uh, they can reach like 150 feet, or something like that, um, in normal conditions. But we have had them read about 600 if it's clear line of sight. So that helps. Um, yeah, it's very simple. Um, you have to, I guess we have to have Wi-Fi wherever your, your gateway is, and then your readers bounce off each other. So as long as your readers can connect to each other, it reads it all the way back to your Wi-Fi connection. Um, everything's on your phone. It's all, I want to say it's all readily accessible. Um, for instance, this morning, I was I was scraping the freestyle barn. My two brothers were milking. Uh, I noticed a fresh cow. She looked like she was a little off. Uh, I pulled her chart up, and right away it told me she had 106 fever. So um, when she came in the parlor, give her X and L and some ruin boluses and some propylene glycol. Um, I think it helps us catch stuff like that. Um, and one thing when we did put it in, when we first started, we kind of like, I don't want to say it, had some doubt. Not not that we doubted it, but the one day there's two cows, it said were in heat. Activity was way up. Um, I went to the barn. I found them. They didn't really look like it. You know, they had some dry debris on their back. It's like, well, I don't know. I don't really think they're in heat. And then 
you know, sure thing, two or three days later, I see a bleed off and it's like, well, maybe we should swallow our pride and listen to this thing, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> it's smarter than any of us are. Um, and that's, that's where it really shines too. Cause we do our own, all our own chopping and stuff. So while we're chopping, um, we have some help that comes and helps milk and stuff. Well, that's when we catch cows and heads when you're during milking time, most of the time. But like when we're not there, the next morning, like the next morning, we go to milk cows. You pull the chart up; it tells you exactly who is in heat, who needs to be bred this morning. It's, it's, it's actually kind of incredible. Herd health have been. We spend less time at herd health. We give less shots at herd health. We set less cows up. It's, yeah. And and this grant kind of made it. It was something we may have done, but being the grant was available, you just did it, you know, and that's. Yeah. I'm curious, Ted, with the bullis and putting them in at an early age, are you using it to detect any like younger calf health as well or any of um, that? We have not gotten, because um, we actually just started them in September. So we actually have not gotten to the small animals yet. Um, currently we have them in our milk cows, dry cows, and pre-fresh animals. Um, we're working on a new heifer barn right now too. So that's kind of, we have quite a few irons in the fire, but as soon as we get caught up here, which looks like everything's gonna be frozen by the end of the week. So it might be the end of the week. We're going to start putting them, um, when we do our fall vaccinations, we'll, uh, start putting them in the smaller animals, but that's where it, um, should help. If you have any respiratory and you're obviously going to see, uh, you know, temperature spikes and stuff like that. So how was the application for you to complete? Do you, uh, was it, I know that nobody likes extra paperwork, right? Um, exactly. and so exactly. I think people see things like this and they're like, ah, oh, crap, one more thing to fill out. But how was the, how was the application process for you? It wasn't too bad. Uh, my wife helped tremendously with that. Um, cause she has a better way with words than I do, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I know there's certain things you need. I know it recommended having like letters of recommendation and how these, uh, products will, um, benefit you, your farm, you know, everything. Um, I think we had a letter from our nutritionist, um, and our veterinarian, saying how it's going to reduce labor and cost and all that stuff. Um, and then I think we had a, had a letter from a financial institution, pretty much just stating that you can, you are able to cover your half um, of the grant uh, or not of the grant. I should say the half the grant does not cover um, that. So a few letters of recommendation does not hurt. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty painless. Um, um, I guess give them as much information as you can uh, to, I think the more they know about the product, the uh, more likely they're going to understand what's going on, I guess. So I guess the more information you can give them, the better off it's going to be. So a dairyman out there who's interested in, in this, Give them two pieces of advice. I mean, there's obviously different systems to put in besides just an activity system, but as far as activity wise, it's, I, I'm surprised we didn't do it sooner. <laughs> you know, um, the grant sure helped. I mean, it, it really does. Um, this technology, it's smarter than we are. So any of this technology that can help you save time and money, it's, it's unreal. Um, the stuff that is available. I guess there, and, and if it saves you time, that's one thing you can't get back. I mean, you're, you, you can always, I don't want to say it. I mean, especially for like me and my brother, we both have young families and stuff. So this really helps out spending more time. It, it might only save us 20 minutes a day, but that's 20 minutes a day over a year. That's a lot of time you could be spending with your kids and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. So anything to save you time, I would definitely invest in that. So time savings, one of the most important. How about your, you mentioned it a couple of times, but how about reproductive efficiency? Is that one of the high priorities? Yes. Yes, it is. We, 
like I said, we just got it implemented. The bowl system started in September. And then for the first like 10 days, this, it has to establish like a baseline kind of deal. So for the first 10 days, it said that we had like 60 cows on the health alert list because, <laughs> because it's it trying to establish averages and certain cows have different temp, you know, every cow is a little bit different. And then we have a dry cows out in our open lot. So then once they got their bulls is put in, their activity was kind of through the roof because they walk, they get watered in one spot and then they go out and graze in another spot in our dry cows. So they were, their activity was just crazy high. And then the ones in the freestyle barn, it was a little bit lower, but after about 10 days, it got really smart. Like it got really accurate, you know, and, it, and actually the install guy was here the other day and he said, they're working on another, they implemented a new algorithm out of their Ohio heifer farm and, he said it's even more accurate as far as detecting heat. So that's really going to help. And, you know, if, if we're giving less off sync shots and stuff, it, it's, it's not only less time at herd health days, which is every other week for us, but you know, a week later you got to give another shot. And then three days later after that, you give another shot. So mm. all that time really adds up. And, and of course, financially it really saves also. So and I, I guess I didn't realize how many shots we were really giving until you don't give them anymore. You know? So, but. Well, well, Ted, we appreciate you sharing your story. I think this really helps, you know, other producers and industry understand ways that they can, you know, consider technologies on their farm. What might be something they might want to consider um, if they haven't already um, thought of something. So appreciate you doing that today. Any last thoughts or comments from Gail or Fred? Sounds Are you like going to apply again this year, Ted? Or what? I I don't know for sure. I should. Uh, I know they said because we were thinking about getting milk meters. Um, mm. But I know we have a lot of stuff going on. My brother just got married and stuff, so we had a lot of stuff going on. We were kind of swamped <laughs> for a little bit. So um, I'm not 100 percent sure if we're going to apply again. I, current right now, um, if it comes available again when we're not quite so swamped, I definitely will because it, it's worth it. I mean, it's it's. A lot of people don't like the book work, but it's worth your time. I mean, even yeah. um, it, and it, it really doesn't take that much time. I mean, it, it, it I don't want to say it, it's something you have to do, but it's something you're going to gain a lot from. And mm. I think it pushes these, like us, we were kind of he hawing around about an activity system, and then once, once somebody's willing to pay for half of it, it's like okay, let's let's just sit down and get it done. And and I'm glad we did. I'm very very glad we did. And I think it's a great program. And um, we actually had a friend of ours. We went out to eat a couple weeks ago and he was um, asking about it and stuff. And I know he was applying. So I hope he gets it. I think it's what he was. He was looking at a bolus system too. So. Very good. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. So Gail, you have been, you've reviewed these grants before and, um, maybe have some good advice for producers as they're writing the application. What are some tips and tricks you you want to mention here? Yeah, so I think the first thing is that it's important for people to recognize that that they want to give this money away, right? And so there's a bunch of people that apply, but they want to give as much of this away to you as possible. Um, and uh, so, you know, we talked about this probably with Secretary Nag a little bit, but there are two uh, two kind of um, sections that you can apply under. You can apply under on-farm processing equipment. Uh, that's generally, at least last year anyway, there were fewer of those applications for the on-farm processing. What we saw a lot of applications under was for the labor reducing technology. Um, and I think the first thing to remember is that it's very important that you can tie in whatever technology you're applying for to labor reduction. So Ted did a great job talking about all the the cow health benefits and the reproductive benefits that he's seeing from his um, from his technology that he invested in. Um, but those are just the cherry on top, right? The big thing that you want to make the argument for while you're writing your application is that you're helping with labor, that you're reducing your labor needs. Um, so it gives on the website a couple examples. So milking robots will count. Health monitoring technology and activity systems count automatic feed systems and cleaning assistance tools, they call them. So like uh, 
like manure scraper type things. Those are all things that are going to, we know will count towards labor reducing technology. Um, and those are gonna be the big things that you're that we saw a lot of people applying for. If you try to apply for something that's not listed, the important thing is to be able to tie it to that labor reduction. Um, the other important thing, uh, if you look on the if you look on the website, uh, which I will, I think we'll probably put the website in the show notes. Um, but it's chooseiowa.com/grants/dairyinnovation. If you scroll down the page, uh, there's a scoring criteria at the bottom. So it's really important as you're writing your application to make sure you're getting everything on the scoring criteria. So you are going through and you're asking for all of the information that that is requested or that you're providing all the information that's requested. And then look at where all those scores come from. So one of the things, so Ted did a great job talking about, uh, you can get letters of support. Um, those are really great. Uh, he talked about getting one from his nutritionist and from other, some other folks. Letters of support go over really well. I think the important thing for me is uh, it lists letters of support or affirmations of financial solvency. Uh, and that's only that's listed under application completeness and detail for 10 points. But the other place where that uh, letter uh, that affirmation of financial solvency, where that can come in as well, um, is there's a there's a scoring criteria called business readiness, financial sustainability and experience. Um, so it says applicant demonstrates sound business management, financial aptitude and stability. And that sounds maybe <laughs> kind of complicated as I'm explaining it right now. But really, it just boils down to if you have a letter from your lender or from your bank, somebody that you have somebody that you have a good financial relationship with that can speak to. Yes, this person has been a client of ours. Um, they have enough money in their savings to be able to cover this additional cost or or they've they've borrowed from us before. And, you know, we we appreciate their business. Right. You having somebody who. Um, has worked with you financially before who can speak to the fact that you are running a financially solvent business, a great, a, a good business goes really far. Um, so it counts not just under applicant application completeness, but it also goes really far in demonstrating your business readiness. So that part, that part of the scoring criteria there. Um, but if you're, if you're applying, make sure you look at that scoring criteria, making sure you're hitting, each of the things on that uh, on each of the different sections on that scoring criteria make sure you're following all the instructions it's little things like that right that can really make or break because because when we when we review these we go through and we score them and a lot of people are applying for very similar things right a lot of people are applying for activity monitors or automatic feed pushers or whatever it is so all of those little things that you can do to be able to boost your application and give it a higher score are going to make you more likely to be able to actually get that financial uh, funding too. The other thing I'd suggest, I kind of talked about this with Ted a little bit, but um, there are a lot of companies out there that want you to buy their product. And so they are going to be willing to help you with this, right? Uh, so I know we heard stories about companies that were providing you know, a little bit of a discount, maybe if you're uh, to kind of promote the the Choose Iowa Dairy Innovation Grant or helping helping folks put applications together or whatever it was. So if you have a technology that you've been kind of like, oh, you know, like Ted said, this is something we've been thinking about for a while. That's a pretty high upfront investment. This can be the thing that kind of gives you the, the kick in the pants to actually get it done. Right. And if you've been looking around, if you were at World Dairy Expo and you're shopping around for some different things or uh, if you've been, you know, talking to different companies or reading in your hordes dairymen about different technologies, uh, and you, this is this is a great time to to lean into some of that. And it's worth talking to that company representative too, because you're going to have to get a quote anyway. So while you're talking to them about the quote, uh, listen to any advice and feedback that they have on these grants as well. Well, thanks, Gail, for sharing those insights on that grant application. I know, I, I think the more detailed they can be probably the better, right? Just include any details that you think would be pertinent to why um, this is a good uh, investment for your dairy. I think it's a, it's a good thing to put into the application yeah. process as well. Yep. I always think of it like giving a set of reasons, 
when I'm applying for grants, and this is like giving a set of oral reasons at a judging contest, you have to say what you you have to, to say what you're looking for uh, or the decision that you're making, but make sure that all of the details that you give kind of support that statement, right? So so you don't when you're talking about your first place cow over your second place cow, go into the detail, but make sure that you're not just rambling about things that don't that don't actually tie back in. So it's really important to find that balance between yes, hit all those details, but make sure every single detail that you're putting in is supporting that scoring criteria and making sure that it's addressing something on the scoring criteria and you're not just trying to fill space to fill space. Thanks, Gail, and thanks for joining us today and look forward to visiting with you on the next Dairy News and Views from ISU. This institution is an equal opportunity provider. For the full non-discrimination statement or combination inquiries, go to www.extension.iastate.edu backslash diversity backslash ext.